If you have a true scary story that you'd like to send into the channel, just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. I have a story about an event that I attended that was posted on Craigslist of all places. Which, I guess, should have been the biggest red flag about all of it. I was actually reminded of this by my wife because of the whole Willy Wonka thing that recently happened in, I think, Glasgow. We experienced something that was actually somewhat similar, but it didn't make the news or anything. I think we all just wanted to forget that it happened afterwards. I was perusing Craigslist, trying to find something that I don't even recall anymore, when I saw an event post for a neighborhood Easter extravaganza. I was curious, and I figured there was no harm in checking it out, since the wife and I didn't really have any plans for Easter for our two kiddos. The first thing I did was Google the address to see how close it was, and was surprised when it was only about 10 or so miles away, which made it reasonable for us to go if we decided to. I remember the description was pretty basic. It just said that the extravaganza would be that Sunday, on Easter, from 11am to 4pm. That it would be fun for the whole family, and that they would have the biggest Easter egg hunt in town, with over 5,000 eggs to find. Each of them stuffed with different prizes, candy, cash, and other goodies. They also claimed that they would have a magic show performed by the Easter Bunny himself, which I thought would be pretty fun as our girls were five and three at the time, so they would probably think that was great. Now, at the time, I was pretty well psyched, thinking that this would be a good time for the kids, and that we could enjoy the day together making some memories. Looking back, it was definitely too good to be true. And I should have realized that when I found it on Craigslist, and not something like Facebook or whatever. But then I thought, maybe they were just advertising it anywhere they could. Maybe it was on Facebook, and they had also posted it on Craigslist so it could reach more people. I talked it over with the wife, and after a bit of discussion and comments like, I don't know, are you sure it's legit? We decided that we would, at the very least, drive by and see if it was worth the time. When we arrived at the address, we parked in the lot and had to walk up to the location, and it was pretty clear that someone's expectations outstripped reality. The festivities were contained to one random yard, and attendance was, let's just say, almost non-existent. There were a few parents there with some antsy kids, and I could tell all of the adults had the same thought, thinking, what the hell were we doing there? There were a few streamers hanging from the trees, and the only real decoration was a hand-painted sign that said, Happy Eatser. Yes, they misspelled Easter on the sign, and it kind of looked like it was painted in dried mustard. There weren't any tables with food for the adults like the ad had mentioned, and there was literally a single Easter basket with a couple dozen eggs in it, complete with the big prizes of a single Hershey kiss and a quarter. I know that it doesn't take much to make the kids excited, and both of my girls were super happy to have that 25 cents, so I guess kudos to them for that. After a couple of minutes of thinking that we were all going to have our organs harvested, and laughing about this whole thing with another couple, one of the self-proclaimed organizers hollered, Hey everyone, it's time for the Easter Bunny Magic Show! He seemed enthusiastic about it, so I thought that maybe, just maybe, this would actually make the time worth it. The whole thing was clearly the definition of over-promise, under-deliver, but I figured that the girls would get to enjoy the fun of a man in a bunny fursuit performing some silly tricks. Then, this absolutely hammered dude dressed as the Easter Bunny stumbles out with his fur head lopsided and the pants sagging slightly on one side. 
he sways back and forth a bit and puts his hands up yelling, Happy Easter, everyone! And then fumbles around on a small table for his props. His first trick was what I think was supposed to be a card trick, but he struggled with the deck in his big fluffy hands, and he ended up dropping all the cards on the ground. He struggled with trying to pick them up for a second, but clearly couldn't maintain his balance, and then gave up after a moment or two. He then said, Sada! Like him dropping the cards was the trick. He then turned back around to his box on the table and pulled out, I kid you not, a bottle of Jack Daniels and proclaimed, Next, I will make this whiskey disappear. Then, he attempted to drink it with the bunny suit on, which made him miss his mouth and pour half of it all over the suit. This must have been the last straw for the guy, because he let out this strange, guttural grunting sound and then fell flat on his side. You could hear a pin drop in that moment. All the kids were staring wide-eyed, about to burst into tears. Us adults were all watching this train wreck with bated breaths, waiting for Ashton Kutcher to pop out and tell us that we'd been punked. My oldest daughter looked up at me and said, Is the Easter Bunny dead? And I just had to look at her and shake my head slightly not sure if I was lying or not. After a couple more moments, the organizer ran up and shouted, Hey, show's over! Everyone, please back up a little bit. And then the other one shouted, I'm calling 911. My wife and I just kind of stared at each other, eyes still wide, completely in shock. All of us funneled out into the parking lot area, and sort of just talked a bit as we watched an ambulance pull up with the lights and sirens on, and the paramedics rush in to save the bunny man. We ended up leaving before they wheeled him out. The last thing I wanted was for my little girls to see the Easter Bunny wheeled out on a stretcher, or worse, possibly in a body bag. I don't think the guy was dead, but I honestly can't say for sure. We ended up just going to a restaurant for a brunch buffet that was actually pretty good, and decently priced, so I guess silver linings and all that. The whole day was, for lack of a better word, a mess. It was awful, and part of me feels bad for the people that put it all together. I feel like they wanted to make something magical, but on a budget of $20 and an owed favor, if that makes sense. Thankfully, my girls don't remember the day, other than my oldest does seem to have a memory of thinking that the Easter Bunny was dead. In the end, it may not have been the day that I wanted it to be for all of us, but it was definitely the most memorable Easter celebration that I've ever been to. I have one Craigslist dealing that was an absolute nightmare for me. I've had a lot of them go south, but they've mostly just been people showing up and saying, Hey, I know I told you 500 but I only brought $100 and a $200 gift card to Starbucks that I swear to God is good, and I haven't already loaded it up in my phone. They've mostly been that kind of stuff, but there was one dealing I had that was bad. Like, scary bad, for reasons that'll be obvious. This happened in 2019. I was seriously strapped for cash after having been laid off from a certain big box electronics store that had been going under for the last decade. My location had closed entirely, and all of us were told that we didn't have a job anymore, basically two weeks before it all happened. Because of this, I needed to figure out a way to make money quickly, to pay my rent and bills. So I turned to selling things that I owned that had value. During this specific period, I was selling my small guitar collection. I only had four, but they were nice, and they were actually my dad's. They had some sentimental value, but I was running out of options. 
after doing some research on the guitars, I found the two of them had some actual value, and those were the two that I would sell. After looking them over for any damage, and looking up some information on them, I found that they were worth around $800 a piece, and that $1,600 would be enough to keep me afloat for a little while. One guy had messaged me saying that he would offer me $1,000 in cash if he could come get them that same day, which was crazy to me. I mentioned that I was only asking for $800, a bit wary that this was a scam, but he said that he had a gig the next day, and that he would be leaving town in 12 hours to get there. He was desperate because his other guitar had been stolen out of his van. That actually all made sense to me. The situation sounded legit, and nothing about what he had said really raised any red flags. He was a desperate musician in a crappy position. We went back and forth a little bit, and at no point did he give me serial killer vibes. So, I agreed to making the sale right then and there. The only thing that I had issues with was his insistence to come and get them from my home. This wasn't something I was willing to do and I told him as such. I mentioned that I was willing to sell it to him for his offer, and that I would be happy to do so right away, but that it needed to be in a public location. Nothing against him, but I'd had a bad experience with someone knowing my address that I didn't want to know it, and I wasn't willing to give that information out. After some reluctance, he finally agreed to meet me in a public place. He said that he would go to Big Box Electronic Store parking lot and to meet him there in 20 minutes. The only thing was that this wasn't really a public spot. He had offered up the Big Box store that I had just been laid off from, so I knew for a fact the parking lot would be empty. In the end though, I needed this sale to happen, so I just agreed, Figuring that there could be a bit of symbolic irony in selling the tools of the hobby I'd given up to work full-time for Big Box Store for the last seven years. Plus, it was a well-lit parking lot, even without people around. I sent him the message, agreeing to the location, and I said that I'd be there by 7pm, which was a little less than half an hour. I grabbed the guitar, looked it over one more time, put it in the gig case, and placed it in my back seat. I was actually kind of regretting selling it. It was a beautiful guitar, and while I hadn't touched it in close to three years, it was still mine. I then opened my bank account app to get those feelings to go away, and they did. So I went ahead and drove over to the big box store lot, and I waited. I sat parked under one of the lights, and waited, and then the clock rolled around to 7, and he hadn't yet shown up. I was starting to think that I was getting ghosted, which would have been hilarious to me, but around 7.05, a black SUV rolled up into the lot, slowly. They crept into a spot a little ways away from me and then very slowly started rolling closer. They ended up parking perpendicular to my car which was odd, but whatever. It was an empty lot. I took a deep breath and opened my door, offering a slight wave like, hey, I'm the stranger that you're buying guitars from today. And after a few seconds of awkwardly standing there and them not getting out, their door opened and out jumped this very average looking guy. I was actually grateful that he was just a random dude and not some seven foot tall muscle monster that could break me in half. He asked if I was the guy selling the guitar, and I said I was, and that it was in the case in the back seat. He asked if he could look it over first, just to make sure that it was in good condition. I agreed, and grabbed the case, placing it on my trunk, opening it and motioning for him to take a look. He pulled it out and looked over it, running his hands along the sunburst paint job and giving a bit of a whistle which told me that he knew what he was looking at. He smirked and looked over at me, saying, You need to learn how to take better pictures. Your shots did not do this beauty justice. I laughed, completely letting my guard down, thinking this guy was legit. 
how else would he have such an appreciation for this old guitar? Well, the true answer was that he was a con, and he just had the charisma. But at that point, I didn't realize that. That came when he mentioned that he was going to go get the cash from his car, and that he was definitely interested. Now, at first, that sounded perfectly reasonable. But he went over to his car and got in, shutting the door. And though his windows were really dark, it looked like he had grabbed his phone and was talking to someone. After a few moments, I was starting to feel a bit uneasy. Something just felt... off. I took a few steps toward my driver's side door and opened it, reaching in and starting the car. That may sound strange, but it was an almost instinctual thing. Like something told me I needed to do it. And I'm glad that I did. I stood back up just in time for this guy to hop out of his SUV. He stared at me for a moment and nodded, motioning for me to walk over to him. I took one step toward the back where the guitar was, and after a second of us just standing there, he took a couple of steps forward, and then reached behind him. I immediately knew what was about to happen, and I took a quick step back towards the driver's seat. As soon as I saw the gun in his hand, I jumped in, threw it in drive, and gunned it. I heard the popping of the handgun going off a couple of times as I drove, but thankfully he didn't hit anything. Of course, it was at this point that I realized I had left the guitar case on my trunk, open, and I watched as it flew off my car and hit the ground, shattering into a few pieces. In the end, I had to let it go, if I wanted to get out of there unscathed. So. I just swore under my breath and kept on going. I kept looking back at the destroyed guitar and this guy standing at his SUV looking like he was seriously mad at what had just happened, and just thinking that I barely made it out of there alive. I ended up stopping at a McDonald's about a mile down the road and frantically calling 911 with my hands trembling. I tried my best to give the cops a coherent statement. They took my information and the description of the guy in the SUV. I also gave them the information from Craigslist, but I didn't think that would get them any closer. I had escaped this situation alive and unharmed, and out a very valuable guitar, all because I had let my guard down. I guess the only justice is that no one got the guitar in the end. There was no way that he could have salvaged it with how it hit and broke so he had done all this for nothing. I ended up selling the guitars to a pawn shop that gave me a decent price, and things have gotten better in my life since. But I can firmly say that I have never used Craigslist for anything ever again. Be sure to like and subscribe today, otherwise the Eatser Bunny might get you. This happened a number of years ago, but every time it comes up, I legit get chills down my spine and get sensory overload. Like, all of my senses. I had moved to a new city for a job. My work decided I needed to transfer to a new location. They paid for the move and the first two months of rent, but that was it. And unfortunately, there were some logistics issues that ended up with me not working for nearly four weeks. This kind of sucked, as not working meant not getting paid. It was confusing. I was supposed to be salary, but was still paid based on hours worked. It's not really relevant, so I'm not going to try and figure it out in this story. I don't work there anymore, and I would never recommend that company to anyone. I do still live here, and I found a new job since, but again, neither here nor there. Anyways, not working for those few weeks meant that I had very little money to my name. They paid for rent, sure, but I still needed food, and I wasn't going to sit at home and do nothing for a month. I figured the quickest way to make some cash would be to do some gig work, and I had heard a friend once tell me about all the money he was making 
working for people on Craigslist. I went to check it out, and I saw an ad for a guy that was offering $200 cash to help him do some lifting for a few hours that weekend. It seemed like easy money, and I was totally free, so I sent him a message asking if he still needed the help. He responded pretty much right away, saying that he did, and that since I was the first to respond, if I wanted it, he would send me the details and delete the post, and the job was mine. No questions asked. I agreed, basically said screw it, let's do this, and he texted me the information. That weekend when I pulled up, I was a bit nervous about the whole thing. I'd had the whole week to really think about the fact that I was walking into someone else's house to do work, and they were offering a good chunk of money. Of course, my thoughts went to this being a scam, or worse, bait, and the house itself wasn't very well kept, so that just kept adding to my worst case scenario thoughts. I figured I would gauge the situation based on who answered the door, get the job done quickly, and get the hell out of Dodge. I knocked on the front door, and this scraggly old dude in a greasy tank top answered, and I immediately decided that if he tried anything funny, I could probably take him. I don't know why that's where my mind went, but it was. He asked, Are you here for the moving gig? I nodded, and he led me into the house without another word. The place was pretty rank. It had a stench that I couldn't place, and it was definitely heading in the direction of a hoarder's house. He then led me out to the backyard, which was just as bad. Overgrown, littered with garbage and old appliances, in the middle was a huge sofa, ironically covered in one of those plastic dust covers, so it actually looked like it was in good condition. There was other furniture, boxes that looked old, plastic tubs, and just a lot of what looked like trash covered by a large blue tarp. He pulls the tarp up, and it's more of the same. He then motioned towards the clutter and says, I need you to get all this stuff here and move it into the garage. It's been emptied out, so there's tons of space, but all of this needs to go in there. I walk over and look at the pile and then over at the garage, which... Yeah, was surprisingly emptied out. I shrugged, and figured it would go quickly enough, and got to work. I grab some of the boxes off the top and move them into the garage. He kind of dictates where he wants them, explains his organization process. It was a bit strange. He seemed to have a good idea of how he wanted things, but the state of everything in the yard and house made it seem like he struggled with keeping things organized. I spent a couple of hours moving and organizing a few things, doing a bit extra and helping him move some of the furniture and other items that weren't in the pile. Not the plastic-covered couch, though. He said that it was a nice place to sit and look at the yard. We got near the end of it, and all that was left was a couple of plastic tubs and another item that looked rather large, which was covered in its own tarp. Yes, a tarp-covered item underneath a tarp. It was odd, but I figured he just really wanted that to be protected. I grab the tarp to pull it off, and he calls out to me to leave it. I look back at him and mention that I don't mind moving it if he needed it moved. He stands up and walks over to me, which was the first time he had done that all afternoon, and again tells me to go ahead and just leave that. I got a bit curious, and I asked him what it was. He just chuckled, saying not to worry about it, and then motioned towards the other tubs. He then says that if I can get those taken care of, he'll go get my money and order a pizza for lunch, if I wanted to stay, saying that he was more than pleased with my work, and that I at least deserved something to eat. I just sort of nodded and said that I appreciated it. He quickly hobbled off into the house, saying that he was going to call in for the pizza and that he'd be back in a few minutes. As soon as he disappears into the house, I decide that I need to know what was under that tarp, thinking it was going to be some sort of weird porn stash or something. And I wish that it were. 
I lifted the tarp up, and to my surprise, there's a damn coffin under this thing. A legitimate coffin, made of a nice, shiny mahogany, still in perfect condition. Now, this was weird, sure, but it wasn't too weird. I mean, you can just buy coffins, right? They're not illegal to own. And while they're expensive, I'm certain you can just go buy one and have it. And then I decided that I wanted to open it, thinking, you know what, I've never seen what the inside of a coffin looks like. What I didn't expect was that this wooden box would have an occupant. I'm not going to get into details, but yes, there was a body in this coffin. Yes, it was real. And yes, it was just as disgusting and horrifying as one might think. I shut the lid and covered it all back up immediately. I very quickly turned to finish the rest of the tubs so that I could get out of their ASAP. When he came back out, he handed me the money and saw that I had finished the rest of the work and thanked me. I told him that as much as I wanted to stay for the pizza, my mom had actually texted me saying that she needed me to come over, family emergency and all that. He seemed to buy it, saying that he hoped everything was okay. I told him that I'm sure it would be fine, just that I needed to go, and quickly apologized for the timing. He said it was fine, and that the pizza was going to get eaten either way, and he thanked me again for my help. I rushed myself out of there as quickly as I could, getting to my car and driving out of that neighborhood and away from that whole situation. When I got home, I struggled to decide if I should call 911 about the whole thing. I honestly didn't know the legalities, but I also didn't know if that body belonged to a loved one or a missing person. So I did end up calling 911, and I have to say that as I explained it, it sounded ridiculous. I told them about why I was there, explained that there was a dead body in a coffin, and that I was certain that it was real. She assured me that they would check it out. I have no idea if they actually did or what they found, but I know that I haven't set foot in that part of town since then. I learned a lesson. Don't ask questions, do the job, and ignore the curiosity when it comes to large boxes under tarps. Several years ago, I had an older Honda Civic that I was needing to get rid of. It was fairly old, but it had surprisingly little mileage on it for its age, and I had taken great care of it. The only damage was a small ding on the rear passenger side door where some jerk hit it with a cart. I loved it, even though I didn't get to drive it as much as I'd liked, but I no longer had a need for it, and I didn't want such a nice little car to rust away in my driveway. Because it was in such good condition, I decided to list it for $1,200, but was willing to be talked down to a thousand if it didn't sell in a week or so. I could have asked for more, but again, I was more interested in getting this thing to a new owner that would actually drive it. The ad had only been up on Craigslist for a couple of hours, when I started getting a flurry of responses in my inbox. The usual lowballs and dummies asking if I could drive it to Manitoba. I live in Missouri. That kind of nonsense but then I clicked on one of the responses that kind of stood out, mostly because it was oddly aggressive. I'll give you 400 for that POS, and you should count yourself lucky that I'm even willing to offer that. I decided to respond to him, mentioning that the asking price was 1200 and that I was pretty confident I could get it with the condition of the car. He responded again, saying, You're a dumbass if you think you'll get a grand out of that fog machine, Take the 400 and stop being a greedy prick. I was taken aback. How many times had being a jerk like this worked for him? I had to tell him in no uncertain terms that I was not going to take that much, 
so he needed to either make an actual reasonable offer or get lost. I figured if he was going to be rude, that I could be rude right back, right? Honestly, he was kind of getting on my nerves with his aggression and persistence. He then told me to go F myself, and that I would be sorry for not taking his money. I told him to have a nice day and that I was done with it, thinking he was done, and that this was the end of the conversation. The next morning, I got up and was going through my normal weekend routine, drinking coffee and checking my emails. I was clicking through the responses that I had gotten later in the previous night, and was just about to message someone back that had offered 1100 when I glanced out the window to look at the Civic. I swear my timing was divine intervention to some extent, because I looked up at the exact moment to see some guy holding a gas can, standing over my car, and throwing a match on it. I rushed out the door as quickly as I could, grabbed the garden hose, and tried as best as I could to put out the flames, which were now engulfing the car. It was no use, obviously. The whole thing was fully taken over by fire. Thick black smoke was billowing up into the air like a signal to the world that the car was no longer for sale. My neighbors all started pouring out in a panic, just in time to hear the guy at the end of my driveway screaming. There! Now you'll never sell that junker for 1200 you greedy a-hole! Should've just taken the 400 It didn't click until that moment, for whatever reason, that the person destroying my car was the same jerk from Craigslist. I have no idea how he figured out where I lived, other than I had pictures of the car on the ad, and maybe one of them showed the numbers on my house. Either way, the man was there burning the car, screaming at me like a madman and taking off down the street on foot. Fire trucks and police started arriving within minutes, and I was just left standing there watching it burn as they tried to put it out. While I was giving the statement to one of the officers, another walked over holding my gas can that I'd left sitting by the garage, mentioning that it was likely what was used as an accelerant. If I had to guess, I'd say that he was planning on destroying the car, but that the gas container offered him a quicker way to do it over just causing damage. His plan was probably to just damage it, and I had accidentally given him the opportunity to completely destroy it. For a few weeks after everything, I kept expecting this guy to message me with a threat, or just to gloat that he had won, but he never did. I had given all the information to the cops, I just hated the fact that he practically ran by them without them even noticing him on that day, because he would have been easy to catch at that point, but because I was pretty much paralyzed and watching my car burn, I hadn't said anything at the time. I never got a call from the cops about finding him, about having a lead or anything, so I had to just accept that it was a loss. They probably just chalked it up to the dangers of dealing with crazy people online. In the end, I suppose I was lucky that my car was the only thing the psycho torched in his misguided and twisted revenge over, I guess, me saying no to his way too low offer. I have to say that I'm lucky because it's clear this guy was not all there, and I had technically given him the opportunity to burn my damn house down. I will never forget that sinking feeling that hit me as I watched my car go up in flames, all because I told this guy no. Part of me almost feels bad for him, that his life is so small and pathetic that he'd go to such disturbing lengths over such an insignificant thing, while another part of me knows the world is full of ticking time bomb lunatics, who just cruise around looking for something as small as a Craigslist argument, or conflicted interaction to completely set them off. So that, my friends, was a collection of creepy Craigslist stories. 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 My mouth is not doing words like it's supposed to today. That's just a thing that's happening. Don't know if it's an after effect of the migraine from yesterday, but it's definitely a thing that's happening. Yeah, so, 
As I mentioned on my community tab, I do apologize for this video going up a day late. I could not work yesterday. So I, in theory, called in. Yeah. My community post is me calling in sick to you guys. That's what that is in this at this point, so... Yeah. It was bad. I, uh, I couldn't do much. I was laying on the couch with a hot hands heating pad thingy, little little iron oxide things that you rip open and shake up and they get really hot. I put that under a rag on my head, so I was covering my eyes and my forehead was hot. And I found out that I actually respond well to heat whenever I have migraines. That is knowledge that, now having, I can potentially fight these horrible migraines that I randomly get. I don't get them frequently, but I do get them. And yesterday's was probably the worst one I've had in a very long time, so... Yeah. Anyways, good, uh, creepy Craigslist story stories. Or, see? I did it again. Craigslist stories. I think it's the ST in Craigslist, followed by the ST in stories. That's messing with my brain. Um, good, creepy stories involving Craigslist. Haven't done one of these in a while, and these stories were pretty fantastic, so I had to. You know how that goes. The, uh, the Eatser Bunny one is probably, and I, I, I thank the person for sending that one in, um, it was probably one of the most hilarious, scary stories I've read in a very long time, and I don't know if you guys have seen anything about that whole Glasgow Willy Wonka thing, but it's, it's a very similar, uh, event, situation, I suppose, circumstance, I don't know what to call it, but it was, it was interesting, it was bizarre. Look into it if you haven't, for sure. Um, but anyways, thank you to everyone who submitted their stories or let me use their stories from other sources. Y'all are amazing. Without you guys, these stories, this video would not be a thing. So, yeah. If you enjoy the stories, please hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, consider subscribing. Or as I mentioned, the Eatser Bunny will get you. You can also leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts down below. How you're doing? How's it going? Have you ever had a weird Craigslist dealing? No. Well, if so, and you want to write it up in long form, just go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to send it my way. You can also join Patreon or memberships, get early access to content like this, and other stuff depending on how you sign up. Yeah. All that said, friends, I hope you are having a lovely week so far, and I hope it continues to treat you well, and I hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be, do not forget it, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, and until next time, my friends, much love and sleep well.